Team Sport Docklands. Docklands was once a hustling track. At some point, the track was so busy, in fact, that most members' events were entirely fully booked back in the day. But what was it that made Team Sport Docklands so popular back in the day? Could it have been the circuit itself, the carts, or the amazing sense of speed you'll get flying on that up ramp? For me, I know it was a mix of everything. From the carts to the community, I loved it all, and I know for a fact that it was the same for a lot of other people. People drove this circuit so much that they described it as a second home. Despite this circuit evolving over time, it still kept its special touch, with the carts still feeling amazing to drive, even though some carts might have been slightly off the pace from now and then, but they still felt amazing to drive. The track kept its amazing sense of speed, and it was honestly so fun to drive back then, and still is now. I remember when I first started karting back in early 2022, I visited this track and it was so unbelievably fun just to lap around a circuit that was so much quicker than any other track I had been to. But in the past few months, Team Sport have decided to take a route that they have with many other amazing tracks that they've had. They've decided to make the track electric. Most members aren't highly optimistic for the turnover as they've seen what's happened in the past with previous amazing circuits that Team Sport have decided to change to electric. I don't actually know how to feel about this change. I do like to keep an open mind about things but I'm not highly optimistic as I've personally experienced the changeovers that Team Sport have done. As I was fairly frightened of what could happen to the circuit, me and 18 other members decided to give it one final send off. So here we are now folks for the final grid start of Team Sport Docklands. But before we get to the racing, I have some absolute words of wisdom. Off to a brilliant start here now as I've noticed that this car is way underpowered coming out of the pit lane. So this is gonna make an absolutely amazing video to watch because I've got to defend off half the pack. But skipping forward, we are on the grid now as, well, it literally took about seven minutes to get to the grid. So um, I wanted to skip that one for you guys so I didn't get absolutely bored out of your minds. But for some reason, the staff decided to put on the lights without any warning. So I've decided to notify every single person around me and the lights go green now and I actually get the best, well, reaction time out of anyone around me it seems, but my car is absolutely struggling off the start and I get a massive, massive amount of understeer coming through turn two and turn three so I've almost killed someone, but he's going to go round my outside because he's lighter and has a better car than me, but he's left the door open so I'm going to send it back down the inside to keep my position off the start. But now, just from that start, I've realised what kind of game I have to play. I have to defend for my life if I want to keep P4. But at this point, I haven't just realised that my car is slow under acceleration, it's also awful at turning. What kind of car have I been given here? This is literally the worst car I think I've been handed in a long, long time. But just to prove how bad this car was, Bobby's just come down my inside from about four car lengths behind. But I go straight down his inside again, just like I've done on the other driver because people keep forgetting to defend and I have the inside line. So now I'm completely tucking in to try to get like the smallest amount of straight line speed. But I just can't at all and my car is literally struggling on top end, cornering, braking and accelerating. This is possibly like the worst car on the fleet right now, which is brilliant. But right now I'm literally having a brown trousers moment every single corner I go through because I literally have a national finalist right behind me and not to mention half of the other rapid drivers at Team Sport Docklands. So 
I'm way out of my depth here because I have an awful car. Starting lap three now, Bobby's gonna try again down my inside, which is also an awful thing because it opens up the gap for Jack Parrott to go down my inside with the best car in our group right now, which is amazing. And Jack's just gonna run my outside. A lightweight against a heavyweight, against the fastest car, against the slowest car. Brilliant. He's pulled about a second on me already, and he's also left me to defend for my life here. Amazing! This race is going swimmingly so far. What on earth can go any more wrong? It could possibly be the gap that Jack's about to pull from me. What the hell? Oh my god, no way! Yeah, yeah. As you can see from my delicate tap of the wheel there, I'm not very happy about that one, and I'm defending like an absolute unit. I'm blocking every single apex, Dante Dillon style. Now, at this point, I've completely backed up the pack, so everyone is literally nose to tail. So, I'm probably gonna get loaded a lot coming through every single corner of the track. I'm still bloody defending because I don't want to lose this position, but just take this moment to listen to how bad this car sounds. Let's just say this car doesn't sound very quick. And now, another issue develops with my car. I have a sticky throttle. <sighs> now I'm literally hugging that inside line because I know any driver is going to see an inside line and just take it. So I'm completely hugging every single wall. It's safe to say that people weren't very happy with this defense as people gave me a stern telling off after this race, but I really couldn't care less because I wanted to keep this position as much as I could because I qualified more than high enough in a sub-optimal car. So I do fully believe I deserve to finish in this position. So I'm doing everything in my trick book to try and keep every single person behind me. As long as I don't get taken out, I won't get past. Maybe not. I get taken out and two other people follow him through. This is not going well. So I am gonna go and change my car because I'm completely fed up with this car and I'm gonna try and catch up to this group. Now, as I've been released from the pit lane, I see the driver in P2 up in front. That is Emmanuel. That means I've been released a lap behind, but that is the least of my worries because I've realized that this car is just slightly better with the same tire issue. So I do see the pack behind me, the, the pack I was in before, and well, they're all raging behind me as I can see two other drivers in pretty quick cars behind. So, I'm gonna try and put in some decent laps to keep in front. Two laps later now, I'm coming into the mezzanine section and the yellow flag has been released, but the tree drivers behind have sped up to catch to me. So now, I'm gonna defend for my life, trying to keep in front. Jack from before, remember the guy that went up my inside, still has the best car in our group and he is flying. As you can see from the slight contact and the hands being thrown up, he isn't very happy with my defense, as I am probably costing him about 1.5 seconds per lap. And now Ben Driscoll has gone down his inside, so that's just made him slightly more grumpier. But I'm now kind of expecting to be taken out within the next two laps, because well, I'm kind of ruining Jack's race, because he does want to catch up to the drivers in front which I'm of course not letting him do because I'm defending like an absolute brick. As you can see from my slight wave in the air to let them through, Jack has just thrown his hands up because he's furious on how much I've just defended against him. Now watch my shocking attempt on trying to keep up with two of one of the most quickest drivers at Team Sport Docklands in rapid carts. Well, clearly from this short amount of time, you can tell that I have a slightly better car than before, but it's not all that amazing because I'm still getting gaps down the straight and I still have an awful two sets of tires on my cart. Skipping forward now, I've been caught up to by the pack from before. I decide to let Lawrence through, but I can see Bobby catching up quickly from behind. But what you're about to watch is possibly one of the worst gaps I have ever been poured on in a cart. 
clearly from my hand signals there, I'm very annoyed about what has been pulled on me. But Lawrence is the least of my worries now, as he's completely disappeared from my peripheral. But now, Bobby has caught up to me, so I am going to try and keep him behind and give him a good battle. Once again deciding to skip forward because the footage is pretty boring, I let Bobby pass and try to attack him as he is trying to pass a back marker. The gaps being pulled are still pretty big but not as bad as beforehand with Lawrence and Jack. Up in front though Bobby has caught and overtaken the driver in front. Now, due to Bobby running over a small wet patch, I have managed to get a switch back. With a shortwave to the camera, I go down his inside and try to cover it off, but a back marker completely sends Bobby to the Shadow Realm, but he has managed to somehow escape the Shadow Realm and, well, try to get back past me. At this point, I thought Bobby was, well, neatly into the barrier, but I turn around to see him drumming on his steering wheel, which, well, means he's bored, so he's gonna send an absolute dive bomb in a minute. At this point, though, I thought to myself, Bobby is nowhere near gonna catch up to Lawrence, so I am just gonna defend for my life to try and give us a bit of fun before the end of the race. I am frantically looking behind now to see where Bobby is, and I don't expect it. He's come straight up my inside because my car is a tractor. I get a switchback, and I'm going to set up another switchback, which fails miserably because my car gets no drive, and he's going to shoot away again. From the looks of it, the pressure seems to be getting to him, so I'm managing to keep up slightly. He goes a bit wayward through most of the corners, I also do to be fair, but he goes wide again and decides to let me through to battle once again. Half a lap later now, not realising that Bobby is actually there, he's going straight on my inside, but I do have the outside line so I can hold the inside. But, sadly, that is the yellow flag, basically meaning it's the end of the race. Bobby, not seeing it, shoots past me, but does return to give me a fist bump at the end. But, the yellow flag can only mean one thing. That is it for petrol at Team Sport Docklands. I tried to give this track a perfect send-off, and I'd like to think I actually did, as I brought all of these people down to the final day. Shortly after, many other people actually came down to the track to give it the send-off of their own. But, as I'm about to turn off Jamie's camera, I'm going to hand you over to Zach for the final podium presentation. The man that started in first, the finished second. Oh, <laughs> Even! Yay. And one of my personal favourites. Long time legend. I'm an Eddie Lawrence. Nah, not you. The man that, what, Lightning? Lightning of Beam, say? Too quick for everyone. Just by the end of the good life, he's already down already. The feedback, yeah. He doesn't really count, does he? Huh? Apart from. Nah. Nah. Right. I'm going to do that. Do I need to say the name? You wouldn't know some things there. I don't need you! We've got a budget for champagne. <laughs> Alright, everyone to the podium. Let's go. Hold on, I wasn't, I wasn't.